Today I'd like to continue our discussion of chapter 22 of the book of Deuteronomy. In this section of the book of Deuteronomy, uh, Moses is giving his farewell discourse. And of course, uh, the people are gathered on the precipice of the uh, Holy Land, just outside it. They're, they're in their tents, uh, and they're preparing to go into the uh, Promised Land. So Moses is leading the people in certain laws and certain customs that now that are going to become very important to them as a people uh, in the, the Promised Land. Uh, a lot of these we find uh, are from later on, but they're kind of collected here at this point uh, and given to the people uh, from God through Moses. Uh, this section in chapter 22 deals with the importance of marriage and virginity and what happens if there's adultery, uh, the importance really of family relationships, which of course is central to building up a people. <coughs> Uh, at this point in chapter 22, you're talking about the idea of, of a man having relations with a woman who is married. Uh, so the idea is that this man um, is committing adultery. This woman is already married. A man is having relations with her. Uh, this is really destructive of community. Uh, and you can imagine you're talking about people that are, are gathered together uh, in uh, a town or a city or a smaller area. Uh, and, and this type of thing would, of course, be very harmful to a community, so it was taken very seriously. And the punishment for this is that they shall both be stoned to death. So there's a fairness here. There's not a different treatment for the man and the woman, as sometimes we see with the, the idea of the superiority of the man over the woman. In this sense, no, there's equal treatment. They are both stoned to death. You might say that's kind of a rather a harsh uh, punishment, uh, stoned to death for committing adultery. But again, the seriousness of the crime uh, in terms of destroying the, the community. Uh, and when you want to preserve a community, when you want to keep people together, uh, this, of course, uh, would be a, a, a terrible evil. It would have this really corrosive effect on a community. So they take a very strong stand on it. Also, what happens if a man has relations with a woman who is betrothed? So when she's betrothed, she is married, but she's not living with uh, in her husband's house. She's still living separately. So in the betrothal period, uh, she hasn't had really relations with the man. They're getting ready. They're still married. It's still uh, kind of a solemn situation but there's no real cohabitation at this point. Now, if a man has relations with this woman and she's a betrothed woman, uh, again, uh, and this happens you know, within a city, uh, the idea is that they should both be stoned to death. And you might say, why within a city? Again, a smaller area, everybody knows one another, they get very destructive to the sense of community. Uh, so uh, this would be the idea that this should be taken very seriously. She's betrothed. There should be no sexual relations at this point. Uh, he's had sex with her, so they are both uh, stoned to death. Again, taken very seriously, as you can see. Now, what if a man comes upon a woman, uh, not in a city situation, but in an open field, and has relations with her? Very interesting distinction here. In this sense, only the man is killed. Now, you might say, well, the uh, man is having sex with the woman, and it's out there in the field, it's in the open. Why is it only the, uh, the man would be killed? And the reason is simply that if she cries for help, then there is nobody there. You know, she's out in the field. Whereas if it took place in the city, and she cries for help, somebody could come and help her. And in that case, of course, only the man would be killed. The man would be stoned to death because the woman was calling for help. Uh, she was trying to stop the situation. Uh, maybe the man was trying to overpower her, but still she was making a stand against him. Uh, and so therefore her life would be preserved. In the case of an open field, well, she could scream and cry uh, as long as she wanted, but there's nobody around in the field who's going to come and help her. So she's more vulnerable in that sense. 
uh, and therefore the man is the one who is punished. He is the one who is stoned to death. So you can see there are some protections here built in for the woman uh, in the sense that she has a say and that she can try to stop it and she can try to fight against it in the city situation. And somebody would intervene in an open field, of course, this could not happen. Now, if a man has relations with a woman who is not betrothed, so she's not betrothed at all and she's not committed to anyone, and that deed is discovered. How could it be discovered? Well, maybe somebody kind of, you know, witnesses it, walks in on it. You never know. Uh, maybe somebody has revealed it. Maybe somebody overheard it. Maybe the woman or the man themselves spoke about it, and somehow the deed is, is discovered. The man who has relations with her, very interestingly, shall pay the girl's father 50 silver shekels, quite a large amount, and take her as his wife. And not only does he take her as his wife, he may not divorce her as long as he lives. So no divorce is allowed. Whereas in some situations, divorce was allowed more leniently and the man could give a bill of divorce and divorce his wife. In this case, he couldn't because he had had relations with her uh, before she was betrothed. And so... Uh, you, you could just imagine the scene where he says, yeah, I'll, I'll marry her and then I'll, you know, quickly do the divorce. No, you can't do the divorce. So again, some protections built in for the woman. And, they, and they're trying to make this a, a very practical uh, reality in terms of marriage, in terms of the prescriptions around marriage. You can see how important marriage was for the life of the community. And so they valued these laws. We value these prescriptions in order to preserve the community, in order to keep the, the, the families together. Uh, this was extremely important uh, at this time, and of course still in our own time today. We know what happens when there is uh, adultery. Uh, we, we know the lack of uh, uh, trust then that comes into the relationship and how destructive it can be and how hurtful it can be to families, uh, how hurtful it can be to children and to others in the family. So, uh, again, it was taken very seriously back then in, in those times, and, and certainly today it is taken very seriously as well. Uh, another prescription comes in in chapter 23 now as we transition to the next chapter. Uh, a man should not marry his father's wife, his stepmother. So, uh, not a, a good thing that uh, if he's... Uh, married, the father is married, and um, the uh, you know the man should not marry. That, that's that's not uh, again a, a good thing because it would be very destructive to family life. And no one whose testicles have been crushed or whose penis has been cut off may be admitted into the community of the Lord. So if there was violence done to a person uh, in terms of their ability to reproduce. They would not be admitted into the community, again, showing the importance of uh, propagation in the community. And so that person would be kept outside of the community. Uh, and, and again, it might seem like a very harsh thing, but uh, this is showing the importance uh, of family life, the importance of reproduction, the importance of having children, very significant in the family then, and of course, in our own families today.